This week on CrossFeed. Mormon is back. Militant Christians. Muslims arrested. Praying in church. Discrepancies in the Bible? And what was Jesus thinking on the cross? Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. And I'm Pastor Jim Butler, out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, at St. Luke's Lutheran Church. Welcome, everyone. And uh, it's still Easter. It's good to be back in a bit of a rhythm. Actually, it's, it's funny. I, um, I, I went to uh, we, our Wednesday night service, and uh, somebody said, Hey, uh, Pastor, good to see you. You know, good to have you back. And I went, What do you mean? <laughs> and, like, you were on vacation? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it was already Wednesday, and, you know, you come back from vacation, and you're all, <clears throat> you've got this huge pile of things that have been, you know, piling up while you're gone and stuff. And I've been so busy, I just completely forgotten about vacation. <laughs> like, Oh yeah! Oh yeah! We had a good time. <laughs> yeah. Well, tomorrow is the is Patriots Day up here, and which is the official running of the Boston Marathon. So it was different this year. We didn't have any visitors. Generally, we have one or two visitors every year who are participating in the Boston Marathon. Yeah, we had visitors, but uh, we had the Gideon well, we had, today too. Okay, well, we had visitors, but uh, today, uh, but uh, no, no uh, Boston Marathon people. Oh, okay. Yeah, because generally we have people who are, are planning on running. And that, and, and, and this is big school vacation week up here. So, uh, we had, uh, like three families gone, uh, because, um, April, it's April vacation week. Actually, this is the first year I've been up, first year in three years I've been here for a, a April vacation. Um, last two years I've been, I took this week and went to Florida. Yeah. So, but anyway, let's move on here. Uh, where do we want to begin? Uh, well, hey, if I'm going to take a vacation, why don't I go to Michigan and <laughs> deal with uh, militias? <laughs> yeah, we know what Jim does on his vacations. <laughs> Lock and load, oh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm on vacation this week, and I'm going to be uh, doing spring cleaning and uh, yard work all week. Uh, That's you know. a euphemism, people. <laughs> Anyway, so um, well, I don't know, man. You're closer. To, you're 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 closer to Michigan than I am. It's just a, right of, right right next door to you. You know, one of the guys is from Sandusky. <laughs> one of the guys in this group, <laughs> which is like practically, I mean, that's it's practically down the road from us. It's a it's a nice vacation. It's it's sort of the Ohio version of Wisconsin Dells, although much. Oh, it's Sandusky not. is the home of uh, Cedar Point. Yeah, it's not too far. So anyway, yep, I'm very, very familiar with Sandusky. Anyway, uh, on here, yeah, there's this, um, uh, there have been for years these religion-related uh, uh, um, extremist so-called Christian militias. And um, this was one of them. Um, they caught some of the last, uh, did a long investigation, um, had a bit of a... Um, Standoff and things, but the, uh, they were ready to go to an attack against the police. Yeah. Yeah. The, all right. And the emphasis here is on so called Christian. All right. Because what these guys are doing has absolutely nothing to do with Christianity. Um, the, the word here is, uh, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Hutari or Hutari. Um, not to be confused with Atari. That's something completely different. Although both of them involve shooting. And um, they, you probably heard about this. I mean, this was actually on national news and, and things like that. Um, so they, they had a plot to kill uh, police to uh, foment revolution against the U.S. government. And, uh, I mean, we're talking roadside bombs and, and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, this is, I think if anything, this is a, a good, 
this points out that just as um, with you can't look at what these guys are doing and say, oh yeah, that's a Christian thing. Um, you know, the same with a lot of American or Western Muslims would say, all right, same thing with us. And and you can debate that because our, right. our scriptures are a bit different um, on that regard. But, uh, as, you know, as far as, as this goes, uh, basically, they're waiting for Jesus to come back. And, and you know how, how John the Baptist, to prepare the way of the Lord, um, you know, went around baptizing people and preaching repentance and forgiveness of sins? Well, these guys are preparing the way of the Lord by, you know, building pipe bombs. <laughs> A little well, different. Yeah, it's his, uh, yeah, their symbols across with the letter C- CCR, Christian, Colonial Christian Republic. It quotes Bible verses extensively on its web and believes the Bible is the inerrant word of God. We only believe what the Bible says, Tari declares. Christ is our King of Kings and top general. I missed that passage. The King of Kings yeah, I'm not, got. But also but the top said, general I never did. My kingdom is not of this world. So right. they apparently miss that passage. Uh, well, one day, as the prophecy says, there will be an antichrist. The Hutari will one day see its enemy and meet him on the battlefield. Now, the, 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 the confusing thing is, is Hutari is the name of the group. And there is a Captain Hutari who is one of the militia members. So um, it gets a little odd there. Yeah, um... The, the, there's a quote here from the ex-wife of one of the leaders, um, said that, she said that he grew in, increasingly obsessed with the group's views. It forced her to leave him. She says, it started out as a Christian thing. You go to church, you pray, you take care of your family. I think David st- started to take it a little too far. A little. Um, he dragged a lot of people with him. When he got carried away, when he went from handguns to big guns, I was done. So, yeah, handguns as a Christian thing was okay. I mean, not that the Bible has anything against guns, but when you're sort of, you know, praise the Lord and lock and load, you know, and and let's all go out and, you know, kill some police officers. Oh, hold on a minute there. <laughs> I, I don't, right. you know... I don't, I, don't, I, I don't think that's a proper interpretation of give to Caesar what is Caesar's. That doesn't mean give him what's coming to him, you know. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. Wars not make one great. <laughs> you no, know, the thing is about this is that um, people are completely missing what Jesus is about. He's not about you know overthrowing governments and and all that kind of stuff. Um, and and of course they are. A lot of these groups, they're saying that these groups have actually increased quite a bit. Uh, there were 149 of, of anti-government extremist and militia groups um, in 2008, 512 in 2009. And they're saying a lot of these things become popular when um, when you have economic downturns and, and things like that, that you know, people are sort of discontented. And, and so they these sort of groups become more popular. Um, and of course, some of them think that Barack Obama is the Antichrist. So, thank you, John McCain, for helping to promote that idea. <laughs> well, I would say, yeah, there's a couple other things that they forgot. Um, uh, number one is, uh, yeah, the whole Romans 13 thing about you obey the government, you know, government's instituted by God. They kind of forgot that verse. But you know what? You can't beat a group that operates out of a double, or a double wide trailer, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, mean, it, I have to say one thing about this article is they really sort of go out of their way to sort of paint the, if you'll excuse the expression, trailer trash um, sort of you know picture. I mean, they you've got um, you know he lived in two rusty trailers in Clayton on a messy yard strewn with toy guns, a flagpole, and portage on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wasn't sure I was reading about Michigan or Arkansas, actually, so. <laughs> so which, you know, I mean, I mean I, I'm sure there are some, you know, very nice, pleasant, intelligent people that that live in, you know, in similar situations, all right, so it's, but, you know, they're just, they're sort of drawing on this stereotype, you know. Oh, yeah, they are, that's for sure. Um, 
But you know what? I wonder what they would have thought if a Muslim wanted to pray with them. <laughs> well, there actually was one. <laughs> That's right. He tried and didn't work. They didn't like him. Or wanted to join and come, but yeah. uh, come in with them. Okay, this is kind of an interesting... I thought I'd never heard of this before. There is a uh, Roman Catholic church um, uh, called uh, Cordoba. Corod- Coroda- Corodoba. Uh, which is in yeah. Spain. Um, and um, um, the the great, it was called the Great Mosque of Cordoba. Cordoba. Cor- Cordoba. Um, and uh, was converted to a Christian church in 1236 after King Ferdinand III recaptured the city from the Moors. And the building then became a Roman Catholic church, uh, our late, the cathedral of Our Lady of the Assumption. And, um, because it was a former mo- mosque, Muslims for a long time have wanted to pray in this thing, in this church. And the Roman Catholic church has said, absolutely not. It's not going to happen. Don't even ask. Well, apparently there was a, um, group of, uh, high school students who came from a, uh, um, Austrian. They were a group of Austrian Muslims who uh, were bought on a tour uh, for young European Muslims. They bought uh, tourist tickets, and they were taking the tour. And in the middle of this, these six, I guess, got on the ground and started praying towards Mecca in violation of the rules. And uh, were, uh, re- were arrested for disturbing the public order. Mm-hmm. Well, um, even according to the report, uh, when the uh, a- after being asked to stop praying, they replied by attacking security guards, two of whom suffered serious inj- injuries. So, all right. So we've got we've got sort of a couple different angles on this, and you know, this is another one of those we weren't there, so it's sort of you know he said she said kind of thing. Um, you know, on the one hand, you go, okay, well they weren't really hurting anybody; they just wanted to pray while they were in there touring this place. Okay, it'd be sort of the equivalent of a Christian going to the Dome of the Rock and, um, you know, and wanting to pray there. Okay, um, you know, it's, what's what's wrong with it? What's what's the problem? All right, well, first of all, um, this is, it was Holy Week, all right? The place was packed with people. And so they're trying to move people through this thing in an orderly way, and all of a sudden this group sort of goes off on their own or, or they all of a sudden bow down in the middle or whatever and 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 so it it disrupts the flow right and i mean let's face it this church they're conducting business and these this was getting in the way of business all right it's also being a bit of a spectacle and you sort of have to stop and ask really is it was you know is that necessary um you know on the other hand you say okay well was is it is it legitimate for them to want to do so Okay, um, sure. If it weren't so crowded, if this were just sort of a, you know, an empty church or, or there were just a handful of people, would it be as big of a deal? Well, yes. Yeah, it would, because there's a law. <laughs> uh, Demetrio Fernandez Gonzalez, recently appointed Bishop of Cordoba, reinforced a ban on Muslims praying in any part of the building, saying the canon law did not permit it. Right. Um, although uh, they did make two exceptions, Saddam Hussein and Muammar Gaddafi have both stopped off and prayed at it. By the way, it's interesting. They both stopped off to pray P R E Y. I know. I at, caught that you know, too. <laughs> <laughs> interesting little Freudian slip there, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was a very interesting little Freudian slip there in the article. Um, of course, at the time when Saddam Hussein stopped there, they thought he had chemical weapons and. Gaddafi had nuclear arms. There may be a reason why they would have loved sure. them. Pray. Go ahead. Just pray peacefully. <laughs> Islam is peace, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, you know, let's just, yeah. Um, hmm. Which is interesting. Hussein Saddam actually was uh, more more secular in his, mm-hmm. his, his approach. Uh, but um, uh, uh, at the end, they have this guy from the Junta Islamica. And who's been trying, pressing for Muslims to be allowed to worship at the mosque. Uh, and he condemned this. 
And he said what he would like to do is, is have a, a space provided for Muslim prayers. Um, and it wouldn't disturb the cathedral. But, you know, it's set aside for war, Christian worship. It's not a si- set aside for ecumenical. For, 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 he says ecumenical. It really would be not ecumenical, but interfaith. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would, you know, kinda, I think it's a type of thing, I think, where if they said, yes, go ahead and pray here, the Muslims would then, you know, pick it up as being, ah, we have a foot in the door. Um, let's see what else we can get to, because this is really ours anyway. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But I think there's an issue here, though, of saying, no, this is this is a Christian building. It's set aside for the worship of Jesus as Lord and Savior and the proclamation of his name. You can't mix that with another message. Right. Right. I mean, you know, on a, from a purely practical standpoint, you know, if, is there, I mentioned the Dome of the Rock, all right? Are they going to put up a little Christian space there? You know? No. Because it's a Muslim temple or mosque or I guess mosque would be the word. Okay. Um, it's set aside for that purpose. All right. A Christian church is set aside for Christian worship, for Christian teachings, for, you know, and why would you want it used for something that teaches contrary to the teachings of Christianity? You know, that's sort of self-defeating. That would be like, you know, that would be like, uh, like Pepsi, uh, selling Coke in their, um, in, in their, you know, putting a Coke machine in their factory. <laughs> it's contrary to their purposes. Yeah. You know, I really like the idea of, you know, saying, I, now I, I really think you have a good idea. I think, I think the bishop should say, you know what? I'm perfectly willing to have a Jewish, I uh, have a, have a, have a, have a prayer room here for the Muslims. Um, you guys open up a synagogue and a prayer chapel at the Dome of the Rock for us, and we'll open up one for you. Yeah. I don't think that's going to go too yeah, far. I want to see a synagogue, a little, just a little thing set off for the, for the Jews at the Dome of the Rock. <laughs> I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or, well, okay, but, if they can't set aside a, a certain space, maybe they could at least put up a billboard. So, oh boy, that's stretching. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Um, this is um, okay. This this goes back to that 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 church. Remember, we talked about over over Christmas, the one that said, uh, you know, had, had the thing of poor Joseph. You know, after you know dealing with God in bed, you know, you know after God, you know, he just was never going to match up there, and which offended everybody. Well, now they came up with one that said, well, it has no sex and things, but it's still quite an offensive billboard, actually, I mm-hmm. think. And they have Jesus hanging on the cross. I don't know what you'd say about his the look on his face. Uh, but it says, well, this really sucks. I wonder if they'll remember anything I said. Well, if there's a bright center of the universe, you're on the planet that it's farthest right. from. So... They said it'll probably be accepted. Why would this be accepted? All right. First of all, Jesus hanging on the cross saying, well, this really sucks. Well, that was his point was to go to the cross. You know what? No, this is it's well, this is right. According to plan. This was the whole reason that he became a man in the first place. Right. Um. You know, I wonder if matter of fact, Jesus even told John, I mean, told Peter, he said, you know, yeah, I could call down a bunch of, um, um, bunch of angels to protect me if I want to, but then, you know, scripture would not be fulfilled. See, the the part that that's missing from this caption is what the they refers to the pastor at Saint Matthew in the city in New Zealand, in Auckland. <laughs> Think, I wonder if he'll remember anything I said, like the Son of Man will be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. <laughs> you know, I mean, all right. Now, the women at the tomb had to be reminded that Jesus said Yeah, that. I think you're right there. I don't think... 
you know, I, I think that, you know, this uh, past Reverend Clay Nelson needs to be reminded, you know, what Jesus said. You know, I wonder if they'll remember anything I said. <laughs> Could you remember just this one, like, really important thing that he said? <laughs> that he fulfilled? He says this one also challenges their theology, but is less in their face. Well, yeah, nothing says not in your face. Like, we're going to challenge um, or, or mock um, the crucifixion during Holy Week, you know? The time when I mean this is a, a pretty important thing for Christians and and I can understand the atheists doing that but these are supposedly other Christians doing this right getting people's attention is one thing getting people's attention and saying hey uh, look at Jesus now look over there <laughs> you know well again I think this kind of goes to the, the militias uh, the, uh, only in reverse instead of being extremist on the right and and stuff. And you know we're we're out looking for the Antichrist, and you know he's going, you know who's Barack Obama. Um, then it's it's the opposite. It's just you know. Th- Sorry, everybody, we're having a lot of problems with freezing tonight. Um, he, um, you know, and, and it's a, a, an extreme liberalism. You know, we're going to you know insult Jesus. Yeah, yeah, but but the guy doesn't believe anything anyway. He made that very clear. Now, these are the silly things in the Christian faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing so silly as the resurrection of Christ. Right. But. He says, we're trying to cut past the church down to the basic message and to offer that to people who either haven't heard it before or who wouldn't expect it from the church. Right? Um, the basic message is Jesus died to forgive your sins and rose again to give you eternal life. That's the basic message. And that's what they're mocking. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the guy thinks the basic message is. Um, but somehow or another, I don't think, you know, uh, you know, he, um, but he's probably one of these guys who think there's all kinds of discrepancies in the Bible and we should just emphasize those. Mm, there you go. So this is from uh, the Washington Post Newsweek that sort of, um, uh, combined on faith deal that they have. Uh, this is particularly in the Washington Post um, from their website, anyway. Um, but uh, it basically they're talking about uh, the kind of summarize it. They're they're saying that there's people that they say yes, I know that the Bible contradicts itself, and um, and there's all sorts of discrepancies, and um, but I believe it anyway. Or you know, it's it's not really about all the the details it's it's more about uh the um the, the sort of main message right on the other hand they they have uh people like uh uh phil phil jenkins uh, author of the book uh, jesus wars who says their beliefs are the merely um the result of ancient politicking uh, or Bart Ehrman, who used to be a uh, evangelical scholar, is now an agnostic, who says there is these c- contradictions in the Bible that are just um, worthless. And um, now, there's definitely this. I was this article has a, a definite slant to it um, because they it's it's all. You know, many just think conclusions have been way overblown, sometimes by scholars with an anti-faith agenda, which is true. Um, they say, you know, but basically it's it's sort of painting this as that um, the Christians are just sort of saying, well, you know, I, I, I just ignore the discrepancies and, and I believe it anyway. Um, but... Um, you know, they do have one person that says to be a Christian, you have to believe that the Bible is, is the inspired word of God and is infallible. But then he goes on to say, in this part, I didn't really understand. The inerrancy of the Bible is evidenced in the fact that it is the most transformative piece of literature that's ever been written. It transforms people's lives in a way that nothing else can come close to. That doesn't really have anything to do with inerrancy. No, it doesn't. Um, uh, on the other hand, this other guy is uh, Ehrman. Uh, um, said the view of the religious right about the Bible being some kind of an errant revelation or an infallible revelation from God simply isn't tenable anymore. And um, 
Yeah, I think that they, they, they quote Craig Evans, uh, professor of New Testament at Katy Divinity College, you know, <clears throat> and saying, you know, they get caught up on who was where and when, and, um, uh, you know, sometimes these discrepant witnesses are, are allowed to stand side by side. And that's a strength. Uh, you know, and two of them, I, I you know, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Shelby Spock. Um, in uh, his, his one of his books of the New Testament, you know, he argues like, you know, he tries to say that uh, uh, Matthew and Luke say that Jesus was, um, you know, that, 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 that the wise men came and they were on their way to uh, Egypt at the same time that Luke has them in the temple. You know, uh, or he, you know, says there's contradictions in who was like there at Easter. Um, it's not contradictions in who was there at Easter. <laughs> uh, but, but there, you know, it's a uh, issue of uh, which decide, which, which, what were they trying to, the inspired writers trying to say. Um, and granted, some say, you know, th- there were a group of women, some say, uh, just, you know, John just highlights Mary Magdalene being there. Um, but that's more of an emphasis. And it's exactly what you would expect. I mean, if you have four eyewitnesses and you get four absolutely identical stories, that's called collusion. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, in case anybody's wondering, I, I did it when I was in college. I had heard, oh, well, they, you know, the, the resurrection stories contradict each other, that they're different. And so I actually sat down with, um, with all four and uh, just kind of looked at the details and that. And uh, yeah, no, they, you can, you can actually get a pretty good picture by looking at all four of them of what happened and when. Um, right. And so I've, and I've got a, I still have that piece of paper where I sort of jotted everything down and, and figured it all out. And um, I've actually used it as a, a confirmation class exercise before and I say, all right, you know, figure out what happened when, you know, and in what order and stuff like that. Um, and it's it's a bit of work um, to to figure it all out, but it's all there. And it's not. And when I say right. a bit of work, I don't mean like you have to um, you have to ignore things or, you know, or something like that. It's mm. just there's just a lot of details there coming from four different directions. And and to sort right. of get all the pieces of the puzzle um, in the right spots, um, it takes a little bit of work. But uh, it's right. actually a great exercise, and, and I encourage anybody that's interested to, to try it. The, the other part of that, too, is, is exactly what you'd expect. I mean, this is a, a huge transformer thing. You've got people running back and forth, up and down. It's a crazy day. Yeah. So, you know, trying to put that in a, a you know, uh, uh, you know, you, you get, you know, four absolutely in crazy event, you know, something like that. You get four different viewpoints of those, you know, everybody running around like chickens with their heads cut off that day. Uh, yeah, you're going to get, uh, you know, not necessarily stories again that, that contradict, but different emphases, things that people remember in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everything you'd expect. I mean, you know, uh, uh, but I still like what Paul Meyer said, you know, um, he said, if it was made up, then the resurrection accounts would have the men going to the tomb, not any women. It would be Peter and John, who would go there expecting Jesus to be risen from the de- raised from the dead. Given they remember predicted. what he taught. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, that's what, you know, that's what they would have said, you know, if it was made up. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of things, and you know, uh, uh, you know. <clears throat> but I don't know. I mean, I don't have, I, I, I'll grant, there are some questions about some things that, you know, raise my questions sometimes. Um, you know, I believe... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I believe in, in the inerrancy of Bible, or, uh, Scripture overall. Uh, but there are some things... But it depends, it little depends by which depend on, by what you mean on that. Well, you know, uh, there's... There are certain things that are poetic and are to be taken as poetic. There's also different interpretations, and in whose interpretation, you know, interpretation right. is not inerrant. And um, right. and so just because there may be something that's sort of like the accepted interpretation, 
maybe that was wrong. Maybe we need to go back to, because I found right. that there were passages that I always interpreted a certain way and understood them a certain way. And then I realized that I was ignoring one word in that, that completely changes the interpretation of that. And I found that a lot of people happen to ignore that one word in that particular um, passage. Right. And and it just drastically changes the meaning of it. And um, so, yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, there, there's a couple of them that come to mind. One of them, of course, is in the, from the Old Testament. One, of course, is when God says, here are the unclean animals and talks about animals that don't have a, a cut foot uh, but do chew the cud and mentions the rabbit. Uh, rabbits don't chew a cud. Looks like it. It's written from an experiential viewpoint, but they don't chew a cut. Uh, or when Solomon and it describes how his um, uh, the uh, build the, the making of his um, of, of the great sea, and uh, and it says it was thirty cubits around or something like that. Well, unless pi has changed since the days of Solomon, it's you know, a pi is 3.14. Um, I got news. There's no way this thing could have, you know, measured, um, 30 cubits, you know, 30 cubits or whatever it was. It was 30 cubits in a hand's breadth or something like that. He's talking round numbers here. Right. Yeah. It's rounded uh, off. And, and yeah, some of the, yeah. you also, that's another thing you have, you also have to look at whose perspective is it, is it being written from? And, and sometimes the, the meaning changes drastically, whether you're looking at it. Is this being told from God's perspective, or is this being told from man's perspective? Are you looking up or are you looking down? You know, um, there's there's right. those differences too. And then the, the other thing, the, 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 what, what always drives me crazy, and I'm still not sure exactly how you interpret it, and that is, um, you know, when David is in Chronicles, and David is uh, um, made king, and the size of the the army contingents that it says were there. Which, you know, come on, if those were the size of the army, the, the nation has to be impossibly huge. I don't know. There was actually somebody I, literally this morning in Bible class mm -hmm. handed me a, a write-up on exactly that. So it's so <laughs> ironic that you just bring that oh, up. Really? Um, yeah. And it's it's from uh, Franzman. Is it Franzman Dalish? I forget, and I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. But it's talking about how those numbers, and this is this is actually another thing that comes into this whole question of of inerrancy, and that is uh, those numbers in the Hebrew are they're difficult to translate, and most translations um, it's probably a mistranslation of the numbers, um, and uh, basically because some of those numbers cannot easily be expressed. In Hebrew, it just, you know, we've got billions and trillions and quadrillions and, you know, and all that. Hebrew, at least biblical Hebrew, doesn't have those, you know, big numbers. And and so it's very no. difficult to express that. And so sometimes you get these translations and you go, um, I'm not sure that's the right translation of that number. And so that's something else that you run into, um, that you always have to go back to the original language. But that's that's so bizarre that you bring that yeah, up. Very good. Yeah, I mean, that, that's one that you know, I sometimes trip over, but thank you for that. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're right. They don't have those kind of numbers. I mean, there's a reason Jesus picked the the, the number 10,000 when he's the guy who owed him 10,000 talents. That was the biggest number they had. Yeah, yeah. So that's you know, why you get, you get this, like, um, was it in, in today's... Um, epistle lesson from revelation where it's like thousands of thousands and myriads of myriads <laughs> yeah, ten thousand times ten thousand yeah yeah because yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah that was by the way the word for ten thousand myriad yeah you know uncountable after that <laughs> who needs like, it so oh, obviously he, they never heard about the senator who said a billion here and a billion there after a while gets to be real real money you know <laughs> They would have said 10,000 times 10,000 here and 10,000 times 10,000 there after a while. It's real money. Yeah. But anyway, um, I don't know. I, I just don't see um, anything to be, you know, gained out of this, uh, out of trying to, you know, debate Scripture and say, yeah, you know, it's, it's not what it means should be. It is. But And, and here's uh, the reality is that these discrepancies, if you think there's a discrepancy, then either... You haven't looked at it in its context, or you haven't looked at it the rest of the Bible, 
or you haven't looked at it in given all of the archaeological evidence, right? Because there were, like, for instance, somebody brought to my attention um, not too long ago, uh, Jericho. Um, according to some archaeological evidence, Jericho was uninhabited at the time that Joshua came through, which sort of throws the whole knocking down the walls thing, you know, like, well, duh, if the place was uninhabited, it'd be pretty easy to conquer it, right? But further study of the of the site turns out, oh, yeah, we were misreading some of the evidence. As a matter of fact, yeah, no, no there were people here. And, and, some, and then there's some debate about, you know, the interpretation of the evidence and, you know, and, and so that happens once in a while with archaeology. But, um, you know, I have had all kinds of people throw all kinds of, of questions at me, uh, most of them atheists or, or mm -hmm. not Christians, uh, that said, what about this? What about this? What about this? And I have yet to find something that, that doesn't fit. That's not either, you know, that's not internally consistent and and also externally consistent with what we know about history and and yeah every once right. in a while something comes along that that sort of throws Christians into a tizzy because oh whoa this this contradicts you know something or whatever but then it's like I'll oh, just relax hang tight and you know every, everything's gonna be fine and and sure enough they do a little more study and oh it turns out to be a hoax or it it's a um you know, it's a fraud, or, or they were misreading the the evidence. They did a little more digging, and and it turns out they were it was they were misunderstanding what it actually was there, or right. it's the archaeologist's interpretation. You know, they say, "Oh, well, David never existed." Oh, well, what about this pottery here that that um that says David on it? Oh, well, that's Dode. Who's Dode? Well, it's some <laughs> god that we've never heard of before, which. I still say that you can huh. better translation of that is dude. But. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for you to bring that up. Okay, so if you're doing the drinking game, he he, he just said dude again. I knew he was going to bring that one up. <laughs> hey, but maybe we have the return of dude, but the the Mormons have the return of Mormon. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, this is interesting because um, uh, um, our buddies, the Mormons, um, had kind of. Well, 10 years ago, I didn't even realize they had done this. Uh, banished the word Mormon. I didn't know it was 10 years they ago, wanted, but I knew they no. had. Yeah, it's a decade-long moratorium. Um, and, and and they were not calling themselves Mormons. They were going to be the uh, LDS, you know, Luther, Latter-day Saints. That was, that was going to be the cool thing, which is really strange because um, – you know, I remember back when they had those, you know, great, you know, those great family commercials and say, you know, brought to you by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, the Mormons. Mm -hmm. And, but they decided they didn't want to be called that anymore. So they were going to do this, what they call rebranding and, you know, try and do away with that. Now, I don't know, you know, you know, we're having this argument in our own church, but the issue in our own church body of, you know, should we, you know, rename ourselves, you know, because, you know, Missouri Synod sounds, so parochial, you know, like, you know, and, but, but what do you recall it? How do you do that rebranding? How do you put this new name out there? I, I suggested the Lutheran Church of New England and yeah, the rest of the country. <laughs> oh, that's not right. So, <laughs> that's the advantage of not being used. Oh. <laughs> There's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> hey. At least we're talking six states. Missouri, we only got one. <laughs> That's it. That's it. The Lutheran Church of Rhode Island. The Lutheran <laughs> Church Rhode Island Synod. <laughs> we're in trouble. So, okay, here's what I wanted. <laughs> anyway, I'm, back to this. The, I'm, I'm so, setting this out on Twitter as as we um, speak, um, and and that is. I want to know that if if there's if they're sort of shying away from LDS and they're going to use Mormon now instead. What's the official Twitter tag? Because the the, uh. the hashtag was always LDS, all right. But now it's now they're saying, well, no. See, because here's the problem: you say LDS, and only Mormons know what that means. Wasn't um, that the stuff that Timothy Leary used to use? <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's LSD. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> yeah. 
Right. Not according to you know the, the 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 fourth Star Trek movie. They said Spock used too much LDS at Berkeley. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Well, I, I don't see Spock being you know really connected with a a, a church that puts a lot of emphasis on uh, sort of experiential, um, you know, burning in the bosom that sort of thing. You know, he's all about logic. I don't so. know. Um, but anyway, what they discovered though is uh, it just doesn't, you know, uh, people respond to the Mormon brand. I mean, that's what the church body was known for for years. And uh, plus, they say, you know, uh, there's a lot of blogs like Mormon Matters, Mormon Stories, Feminist Mormon Housewives. Um, uh, last year, they said, uh, uh, I guess on Google, uh, 20. I love this. 26.8 million people. You know, why don't I just round it off? Uh, about 27 million people search for the word Mormons. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, no, you know, five Mormon and five, five million Mormons, one million Mormonism. Um, and, um, you know, 32 million did LDS. Um, but most of those were probably church members. So, or, or people who were sort of, you know, knew that that's the, if you're looking for something official, then you're going to search on LDS. If you want to know, you know, something, uh, either, you know, by individual, basically, if you're not looking for something specifically insider information, you know, then you're going to search on Mormon. Right. And I, I, I like, you know, that they had this. Marketing research expert who also happens to be Mormon out there. Uh, his name's uh, uh, Kenneth Foster, and he says uh, the church can't really back away from the term use of the term Mormon, given the ingrained history of the term and the resources the church used to establish it. A better strategy may be to embrace and revitalize it, which apparently that's exactly what the LDS is doing. Mm -hmm. No, I, I thought this was sort of. Um excuse me, just a, a little bit amusing, um, that they... Uh, Citizens of the world, you are under my control. They... All right. Uh, Mormons seemed to have benign enough nickname until the 1990s when critics increasingly changed the challenge or charged that the church was not Christian. To help counter that claim, LDS officials unveiled a new church logo in December 95 with the words, Jesus Christ Enlarged. Because if you have a bigger font, then you must be Christian. <laughs> it just seems, I, I'm sorry, but it just seems reactionary. You know, we are the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You know, <laughs> that, that doesn't really answer the the charges that it's not Christian. And, and you can debate that. And, I, you know, and we've talked about that on the show before. But, um and 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 i would contend for the most part while i have met mormons who by my estimation are christians or you know or at least could i could be arguably considered christians um because i've talked to them and and their understanding of of salvation was well frankly it was pretty lutheran um you know i actually have yet to meet a mormon that believes in the trinity and uh that's a that's a you know pretty big break from uh from orthodox christianity so um so, but yeah changing your font size <laughs> that's not going to answer your critics uh, yeah and then another one yeah they they said you know uh then they said well we prefer you just to use the 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 uh, shorthand the church of jesus christ well that would just get it confused with the Christian Church, the Disciples of Christ, the Churches of Christ, which are all Protestant bodies. Um, and then they had this, and then you know, really trying to push the the official name. Um, and they they had the guy's last name. I I can't find where his where he described who he actually was. Um, this guy last name of Otterton, and um, he says. Um, um, <clears throat> The name is a mouthful. As a journalist in England, he was allowed only 16 words for his first paragraph. The church's name takes up nine. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty hard to um to come up with your uh your quick short summary when you've got to deal with that sort of restriction. Oh, okay. Um uh, his name is Michael Otterson, uh, Managing Director of LDS Public Affairs. That's who he is. Um, and so, anyway, uh, Mormon's back big time. Uh, the Desert News has created the Mormon Times. Mormon Messages is on YouTube, and they got a Mormon channel on the radio. So, so you know, Moroni I, and his Mormons are big. They're back. Bes- besides the... Uh the 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 Mormon tag, um, or being searched for a lot on the internet. Uh, the other big reason was that with this whole fundamentalist um, FLDS uh, kind of polygamous group, the Mormons have been trying to separate themselves from polygamy since 1890, uh, when it was discontinued by the mainstream church, and uh, so when this group came along. And um, they were referred to as fundamentalist Mormons, or um, the, by their name, the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, who consider themselves, you know, pure Mormonism. Um, now all of a sudden, LDS is being, or FLDS is, you know, people are becoming familiar with that, and so, yeah, calling yourself LDS isn't going to help you know, get you away from that either. And so they went, ah, forget it. We tried, you know? <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting. Oh wait, did I get a response? No, nope. darn. <laughs> just, you know, I, I just want to know how to tag things now. If, if I'm talking about it on Twitter, you know, are they, are they going to move away from that? It, it's still a shorter tag. And when you're dealing with 140 character limit, it makes a difference. So uh, well, uh, yeah, I think they'll probably, they'll, they'll probably stay with LDS because it's it's, it's fewer characters. Mm-hmm. Probably for that reason. Hey, maybe you guys have another opinion. Maybe you got you're in advertising and you can tell the Mormons what to do. I don't know, um, but if you have a, a, any thoughts, any ideas, please let us know at <coughs> a podcast at crossfeednews dot com. Yep. Now I did get uh, one piece of feedback on Facebook. Um, this was sent to me directly, so Jim wouldn't have gotten it. Uh, this is from a friend of mine by the name of Jim. Um, and uh, he says, this is talking about that devil in the Vatican story. He says, of course the devil's in the Vatican. A powerful and entrenched multi-billion dollar organization isn't going to cover up sexual abuse by a handful of perverts and its employee based on its own need for control and hegemony. There just has to be a sinister supernatural agency at work. You guys might get a good laugh at claims like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Can't argue it. Hey, God give you all a beautiful week. Um and take I uh, and, and just relax and enjoy yourselves this week. Yep. Hey, oh, hey, before we close, I just want to plug uh something I mentioned it last week, uh but we actually got it going this week. Uh on Sunday mornings, um at nine o'clock Eastern, we are doing a live online Bible study. Uh, we're studying Gene Veith's Spirituality of the Cross, and uh, we are. It's it's allowing us to anybody that wants to tune in. You can just go to shepherdoftheridge.org, click on Live Online Bible Study, and um, and and you'll you'll see my face. Which you know, if you're watching this, you're used to that, and you're probably numb to it now anyway. So, um, but uh, we're 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 reading the book and discussing it, and you you don't have to have the book there with you. Um, if you do, it'd, it'd probably help, but, um, but you, you, I'm, I'm reading the whole thing. So, um, you know, you can just listen and then, uh, you can, if you have comments, questions, you know, anything like that, that you'd like to add, there's a chat window there. Uh, you can use the regular chat window or there's also one that integrates with Twitter and Facebook and, and stuff like that. And so you can use that if you want. And, um, and so it's a, a way that if, you know, if, if you're not in church on Sunday morning for one reason or another, um, that you can participate in this Bible study with us. And um, so we had uh, you know, one or two people uh, this morning uh, who were didn't actually uh, comment at all, but were uh, checked us out. And if you, if you can't be there in the morning because you are at church... Um, or it's just not a convenient time for you. We are also recording it so that you can watch it later. 
So just wanted to get that plug in there. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so, and so, yeah. Cool. Go for it. Have a great week, everybody. I'm on Good vacation. Night, everybody. <laughs> God bless you.